Hi, everybody. He's Dave Pensado. I'm Herb Charlick, and welcome to another episode of Pensado's Place. We're going to pick up the second part of the brilliant Justin Tranter interview, but first, we've got some news for you. The Pensado Pro Audio Party at Summer NAM Nashville is coming right up. Saturday, June 30th is the date. Music Center, booth 453, Hall C at 1 p.m. is the place. And then we go deep with audio giant John McBride. We're going to talk about the opportunities in audio, his amazing Blackbird studio, the live business, his mic collection, and so much more. But then it gets better. At 2 o'clock, we all move to the Pro Audio Lounge, still in Hall C, for gear goodies. So John, Dave, and myself will all be hanging. We want to meet you, and we're going to give away a whole bunch of stuff. Compressors, microphones, mic pre's, plug-ins, softwares, t-shirt, caps, all kinds of stuff. We may give away some staff members. Who knows? Um, all from the good folks at Warm Audio, Isotope, Sonar Works, Avid, and, and, and more to come. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Warm Audio Grand Prize is worth almost $5,000. That's serious stuff. That's not, it's that's nothing to... It's I'm using it right now. Yeah, lots of people love their stuff, so you want to come hang. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough, Pensado's Place will also get you in free that Saturday. It's pretty simple. Go to bit.ly forward slash Pensado Summer, use the code Pensado, fill in a bit of info that's necessary for security so you can get in, and then you're in. It's just that simple. So, to summarize, remember, Saturday, June 30th, booth 453, Hall C at 1 p.m., Dave and I and John McBride. We all at 2 o'clock head down to the Pro Audio Lounge, also in Hall C, for audio goodies giveaway and you can attend for free. Uh, bit.ly forward slash Pensado Summer is the link. Code is Pensado, and then you're in for free. All right, we want to see you there. Now, here's part two of our conversation with Justin Tranter. So, joint venture deal with Warner Chapel. Yes. Signing writers to yourself. Yes. Right? The business side of the business, mm -hmm. is that something that's of interest to you? Because obviously you're a businessman. Yeah, well, like with the jewelry, if I actually would have been a little bit more business savvy, mm -hmm. I think it, it would still be here. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't survive a lot of things that were changing in, in, in all businesses after the economy crashed. Sure. And blah, blah. Yeah, I think I have a really good marketing sense, mm -hmm. and I love that. I think there's an art to it. Mm -hmm. I think that there, I love the idea of the whole brand, the whole brand of a of a artist and a mm -hmm. whole brand of whatever it is. Um, but when it comes to actual like business, business, mm -hmm. no. I don't I mean I don't I can't do anything. <laughs> I can't. Well, I think that the thing that's interesting about that clarity is that I think it's important to keep uncluttered for what you do do. Yeah. And if you, you know, I find in myself like I, I just too many things I do and yeah. it starts to affect other things I do and I don't really want to do that. Yeah. Um and when you start to get overwhelmed there was a long period of time when I was a record executive that producers could not create hit, hit labels. They all got yeah. deals. Yeah. And it still happens today. Yeah. And you've, you've actually mentioned one or two people who I've seen go through that loop and not be successful. Yeah. I came up with a lot of them. Yeah. And it was because what they were good at, all of a sudden they got bogged down with things that they weren't good right. at. And somehow the magic of them creating a hit record was going to make them good business people just not true. It doesn't. Right. Um, and I feel like that I have a slight advantage just because of all the years in the band, like my capacity, my emotional capacity for like the hustle mm -hmm. is a lot higher than the average songwriter or producer mm -hmm. uh, because the hustle of being in a shitty van and playing in punk bars to know people mm -hmm. but still believing in it and still like I, I, I feel like I can I can handle that better than some, but yeah, you have to know what you actually want to do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I have gotten to a point where it's like, it's time to pump the brakes until I can bring in the right partners mm -hmm. to expand this. And if I don't have those partners that feel right, I don't want to go any further. Give me some snapshots of people you've worked with that just anecdotal, interesting process, who knows? So you obviously have an affinity and a close relationship with Gwen Stefani. Yeah. What is it about her that Float your boat. I mean, I you. think she's one of the greatest artists of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think her, her, the DNA of who she is shows up in every single song she mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, to be able to work with someone that is that clear about what they are, mm -hmm. to me, that's like the hardest part of being an artist in the sense of the singer and the artist is that you have to know who you are and what you're doing. She, she, she to me, defines the word star. 
hundred percent. And it's it's effortless, yeah. so it's never offensive. Yeah. It's just she's being her. Yeah. Um, spin the dial, Cardi B. Do you have a chance to interact with her at all? Oh, we just met very briefly. Oh, okay. But to have a song on her album, it's like, I I mean, it's like I could die now. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. like, I mean, it's just mm -hmm. too, it's too cool. And that's one of those amazing moments of the amazing new landscape of the music business, mm -hmm. where uh, me, Ali Tamposi, Andrew Watt, Benny Blanco are all friendly and we hung out for a couple days and wrote a song. Mm -hmm. uh, and then through Andrew Watt's magic, uh, it got to Cardi and she, you know, completely adds this whole new life to it, mm -hmm. writes the fuck out of the verses. Mm -hmm. Obviously, none of us touched that. That's like mm -hmm. that's and that to me that's amazing. I think that there's some some old school people who would be like, but that's not real art or that's not blah, blah, blah. It's and that, nice. to me, it's like, no, that's like the coolest thing ever. Like four mm -hmm. friends made a song and then the coolest artist in the world currently mm -hmm. slayed it and mm -hmm. wrote her own new yeah. part that we didn't even hear until it was done. You know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. that's and, cool. And because Very of cool. your because of your background or when the band, mm -hmm. the band was around, it strikes me like with Imagine Dragons or so on and so forth, that what you'll bring to it is sort of a rock sensibility, but you understand popular. Yeah. Is that fair to say? That's fair. You know, I've had a lot of really great success working with bands as a pop writer, which is not normal. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Pop writers normally, you know, my first hit was with Fall Out Boy. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously DNCE was Joe Jonas, but that's very much a band. Yeah. You know, you were really taking into consideration the whole picture. Yeah. And then Imagine Dragons obviously is the biggest band in the world right now, mm -hmm. um, has been for a while. Um, and I think that there, yeah, there is something to the fact that I understand the, the integrity of a band uh, and what their fans expect mm -hmm. is, is in a lot of ways even more, like, I don't wanna say serious because that sounds like I'm being negative with the others. It's like, it's like this church that you can't fuck with. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. bands like, I feel like we have to move a lot slower when they want to change their sound and they want to do that. They really, because it's like, their fans are not just buying into one person. No. They're buying into four. They're that, buying into that, a whole thing. Yep. Um, and I'm really respectful of that. You know, when Dan and I of Imagine Dragons, lead singer, when we first started working together with Matt, Man and Robin, um, we got in to just write to write. Mm -hmm. And maybe the songs would be for other people and blah, blah. Because when he, I mean, he's written almost all those hits, the top line, he writes alone. He's a fucking genius. Yeah, right. And I could tell when we were, Believer was the second song he and I ever wrote together, and I could tell this was, this was his. Uh -huh. And I like very respectfully, and luckily for me, smartly, like just kind of backed away. Mm. And I was just there to enhance and focus and elevate, and that was, I could just sense, like, oh, this is his story. Gotcha. This is his life, this is his band, this is his world. My job is to just try to make it the clearest and the best that it can be. Was Alex around for the process? Alex the kid? Uh, we never worked like directly in the room with him, but gotcha. he's involved in the whole uh, with everything. The whole situation. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. What I think is interesting about where you are open creatively, because the band thing to me, they are family members that are indelibly tied together. And yeah. so to let somebody in we're we're close with um uh uh Noah Passavoy. Mm -hmm who I call Maroon 6. <laughs> yeah. And so he he ends up, whether he's mixing something or co-producing something, he's yeah. on the fringe dancing around the band, sometimes creatively, sometimes doing technical things, yeah. sometimes writing with co-writers. But the art of that, yeah. there's an art to that. There is, for and, sure. And a lot of that at the, at the, at the heart of it is trust. Yeah. It? Very much. Well, what's funny too, I think I really, as a collaborator, I really learned about that trust with Julia Michaels. Mm. Um, you know, the first, we've told this story a lot before, so I'll tell it briefly, but like the first day we met, uh, you know, even though she's so much younger than me, she had been in the songwriting circle out here a lot longer than I had. Yeah. Um, so I was 32, she was 19, and She's like, oh yeah, don't work with that person. Oh, this A&R sucks. Oh, this, like, she's like, this 19-year-old girl is just like schooling me. Mm -hmm. And she was very anxious about writing with a new person because she kind of had her posse. And so like we went to lunch to like calm the tension and then like a woman tried to fight her on the street. So that was odd. Oh, and, and oh my God. I protected her. <laughs> and um, anyway, we went back to up to finally write. 
Because if you hit somebody with that ring, well, I didn't have this down. ring yet. Oh, I got you, got you. But <laughs> was, you had the attitude. I was broke as fuck. Got you. <laughs> I had the, I had like the invisible wig to protect us through all of it. But, um, but we went back upstairs to the producer's apartment we were writing in, and Felix Snow, amazing producer who did mm-hmm. Kiara's Gold mm-hmm. and a bunch of other amazing shit. And I had this song title and called Sick of This. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, it's just like a love song. Like it's so amazing, I'll never get sick of this. And she was like, well, I love it. What if we flip it and it's like, this relationship is so horrible, so dramatic, so volatile that we'll never get sick of it and we're mm. addicted to the drama. Mm. And I was like, well, that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's why I'm here today. Mm-hmm. And, but then she was so nervous to write in front of somebody else that she like literally went and hid in a closet. Mm. And the producer had the track looping loud enough that she could hear it through the closet door. <laughs> and, she in there. and then she like kicked open the door and sang my title in like the best melody I've ever heard. Mm. And then we fleshed it out. And as we started fleshing out the lyrics, I really realized that she was writing like a very specific, Mm -hmm. this was her life. This Mm -hmm. wasn't just like, she wasn't making something up. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I was like, oh, I can do this. Mm. Like I can, I had my band. I wrote, I sang and wore and wrote exactly what I wanted for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like I can go, and even though at the time we were writing for other people, Julia wasn't doing the artist thing yet. I knew like, oh, this is hers. And I need to just, support this and I need to just be the best co-writer I can be. This isn't about me at all. Um, and so that, I had that from my band, but my band was mine, so it was a little different. But mm-hmm. really it was working with her that I really learned the skill of like, delete the ego, be here to support. And mm-hmm. so then when I walk in with bands, it does make it a lot easier. With how, anybody, it makes it easier. How's Kesha? You guys still? Kesha's the fucking best. I'll yeah. see her on Friday at her show. Oh, cool. Uh, an artist signed to me named West Period, who's an amazing rapper, producer, singer, everything. Uh, he's opening for her in Macklemore for the whole summer tour. Oh, cool. So, Very cool. Uh, I mean, I, I would go see Kesha no matter what. Mm-hmm. She's been my friend for a long, long time. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, she's doing great. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Uh, How did issues come about? Can you, like, can you? Go a little deeper in the process, like maybe, so Julia comes to you with an idea. Is that the way it starts? So we always just, a lot of times with Julia, she will have the idea beforehand um, where she'll come in with a voice note of basically like the main line. Uh, and then I'm just the lucky motherfucker that gets to like help make that brilliant line. By the way, there's a really name good. for that process. It's called producing. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> we live in modern times where those terms, yeah, no. if you don't own a computer, you're not a producer. I know, I'm a mixer. I, I don't <laughs> want to be called a producer. So, um, the, but for issues, we were in the room. Uh, uh, Stargate and Benny Blanco were doing the camp for like a week or two weeks. Uh, at Westlake on Beverly. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were in the room and uh, she's told the story a lot. I don't like like to tell people's personal stories, but she's told it. If anyone's really interested, you can look it up. But what she was kind of going through with her boyfriend at the time. And um, I honestly do not remember who, whether it was one of the guys from Stargate or Benny, but someone started playing the plunk, 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 plunk Mm -hmm. that has now been amazing. It's so minimal. That's that's just... And that's the, the the trick ending. Who came up with and the issue is you. I mean that's kind of like, it's just one of them is how bad I need you. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Julia. I mean when it when it comes to the a Julia song, the meat of what you're hearing is from her. And I have no. When it first started happening, I used to think admitting that made me like a less of a co-writer. Mm-hmm. But being able to own that actually makes me a smarter co-writer because I know mm-hmm. where my strengths and weaknesses are. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, it just kind of came, it started to come out of her and we just sort of organized it as quickly as we could, which is my favorite thing to do with her. It's just like, I feel like there's just like genius flying at my face and I have to support it and love it and help it shine the best I can and like make sure nothing falls, you know, like. Definitely um, producing. Yeah, and um, it was honestly done in like 45 minutes. No Mm. joke. Most of my biggest songs have gone, they're like in like the 45 to an hour and a half time Mm. period. Yeah. Uh, the meat of it, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's people have to and polishing exactly. And, yeah. and, oh, the bridge sucks. Change the bridge six right. months later or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. But like the, I feel like if the core emotion isn't there for me personally, there's writers mm-hmm. who have written unbelievable songs that take two weeks on the pre-chorus. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not to shade them at all. But for me, if like the core of it isn't there in like an hour-ish, then it's probably not going to be there. Not gonna and it. I'll just move to a new idea. Gotcha. Gotcha. I have a self-serving question, but I'm gonna do it after Batter's Box because okay. I think you're gonna kill with Batter's Box. <laughs> so are you, are you ready? I'm not gonna do it. 
Okay, cool. I've so let you won, and I just I've talk. never won one, and you're not going to win today either. Well, we got a three point nine at Berkeley. I mean, how can I? I can't compete with this. But see, the the beauty about this is that and I'm not I'm not saying it's the first, but it's the first we've only talked. We've got a gay activist who can absolutely wield the bat, and you can do that in any kind of metaphorical way <laughs> that you want. Again, that's two. That's right? two. <laughs> Shoot. I well, no, I'm sorry, that was another one. I remember when Herb used to be on my side. Well, Damn. yeah, just for now. Okay, wait, can I just get the, how do I win this again? Just you won answer reasonably quickly and, okay. and you'll win. Yeah. And like, it's the goal of the questions is, is that they're like, they're really fierce, like without an explanation. Just whatever it comes, it, this, is, this is all make-believe, the, the, the competition part. Because, oh, you can't, because you can't say competition to me and expect yeah. me to not take it seriously. Absolutely. I like it, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, we're gonna make fun of it's you if you yeah. <laughs> When you're gone. <laughs> no, it's just a fun thing. Okay. It, it, gives, it gives our audience a way to kind of see a little deeper into your psyche, you know? It's okay. Fire you rewarded for speed. Tempo. Incorrect. I lost all that. speed's incredible. That's too fast. You. Good with the bat. Key. C major. Mm. Nah. Oh, wait a minute. Julia. Genius. Plugins. Uh, are the JJP things considered a plugin? Yeah. JJP yes. things because he um, based some of it on my band. Okay, oh, that's cool. oh, did he really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. DAWs. DAWs, no idea. Okay. Love that. <laughs> Genre? Genre uh, doesn't exist. Melody? Uh, lyric. Collaborations? Everything. Punk rock? Uh, your list says punk, not just punk rock. Mm. And I prefer just punk by itself. Okay. Because punk is, so I'm like, like, my question to punk, or my answer to punk is just aesthetic. Because you get a lot of in, in your work, you know, yeah. attitude. Yeah. No I closing question? Best, um, yeah, come on. More. <laughs> He's already, he's already made me look bad. Harold. I can actually do the self-serving question I okay. have as a batter's box okay. thing. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Pensado's place. That's really good. That's really good. Because I have to be like super smart because you guys are sitting right here. <laughs> or you could just be honest. Well, just say, remember I got a full glass of water. Two O's. <laughs> <laughs> With my name on and, it. And I, I, get, I have a follow up. Um, uh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> That's a good answer. Educational I don't either. entertainment. Oh, cool. He has. What do you call it? Well, we we actually use. We call it edutainment. Do you really? Yeah. He's That's crazy. crazy. Look at that. Three. Another one. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Don't uh, touch me. No, no wrap up. Question. <laughs> you usually, you usually ask your. Uh, I know, but it doesn't work here. We'll try oh, it. Okay. Um, if your studio caught fire, or your apartment, or wherever you create, mm -hmm. what one piece of gear would you rescue? Not my house, right? Right. It, okay. It's hard to carry out. What one piece of gear? Something you could carry out. Uh, concealer. Ah! <laughs> that is so perfect. <laughs> that, we had this thing in my band where I had to listen to these motherfuckers <laughs> talk, one of them's here, to listen to these motherfuckers talk about gear all day, uh -huh. musical gear, uh -huh. all day, every day. Uh -huh. For ten years, driving right? crazy, crazy. Yeah, like no Happens one cares. No one cares about your guitar tone. They're looking at me doing the splits. Like right. stop talking about it. They do care, but you know it's the give and take of a band. Yeah. Then when friends of mine would join the tour, <laughs> who are like fabulous queer people for the most part, and we would sit there for hours talking about makeup, mm -hmm. and they'd be like, ugh. Stop talking about makeup. I'm like, this is my gear, okay? Right. Yeah, and I exactly. have to listen to you guys. <laughs> Look at this mascara. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what? I'm I'm actually rapidly approaching the time when concealer might be more important than gear to me. <laughs> oh no, you're past it. <laughs> Maybe we should chat after the show. I mean, you talked about your makeup artist way more than anyone else on your staff. Mm -hmm. um, Always does. I love Cindy. Cindy's That's the what best. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Cindy's the best. So I think my answer is kind of the best answer in the history of the show. No, I think it. I think it, and certainly the most. <laughs> Original. Justin, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here, my friend, and I, I think that was, if not the best batter's box we've ever done, it was the most fun for me. So, uh, Abs absolutely. Uh, 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 3.9. Well, and, and, and honestly, the self-serving question, I think, um, I'm constantly sort of, uh, I don't want to say surprised, um, I guess glad mm. that the show matters to people 
at different places. 100%. You know, you're at a different place than somebody watching and so on and so forth, but it still has value. So I always, I always, I'm asking to find out how it works for you. You said you had a friend, a, a band member of the show is important to and so on and so name? forth. Dan. Dan, oh, Dan, Dan's here? Yeah. Dan. Come up here and say hello, Dan. <laughs> Come on up, Dan. Come on up, Dan. He's... Hey, man. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? So, tell this me. This is hilarious. Yeah, well, no, but apparently you were, you said you're a fan of the show. Oh, I've seen them all. Just about, I think. Hey, yeah. Dan. Yeah. So, so what, what stuff did he say today is just blatantly not true? <laughs> Nothing. Everything is the truth. Dan. Is he paying you? Yes, okay, millions. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. uh, but no, but seriously, I learned how to engineer from watching the show sort of by force uh, when our band was falling apart. We had to find something else to do. Uh, and we were like, yo, you should start writing songs, produce this and that and the next. And mm -hmm. we didn't even have Pro Tools. All we had was Ableton because we used to use like sort of like a live play along tracks. Uh -huh. And I just went online and we knew Woo because we were working with Tricky Stewart at the time. Uh -huh. And Somehow I was like Googling his name to try and learn and I saw this show called Vince oh, cool. Place. Yeah. And I watched like 100 episodes in a row to try and learn how to do the production thing. Did you learn thing. anything? I mean, a little bit, but yeah, I know it's been. A little been, bit? A yeah. It was way. like going to school. It's like four years of college of just watching wow. over and over and over again. So. But in a much cooler way? A hundred times cooler way. Oh, cool, cool. Well, now we have you both here. There you See, go. who knew? Yeah. Uh, he was very explicit about the fact, and we were, as you can tell, we were. You, we asked to sort of quantify if what we're doing still has value because we've been around for a while now. So it does. You're you're, you're saying it does. Yeah, one hundred percent has value. What's Amazing. What's your favorite song that he's written and why? Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. Um, and well, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably sorry. There's a couple lines in that song that I hear so true um, coming from both of the Justins saying it, and it like really resonates as like a. A human emotion across the board, and oh, that's, that's probably my cool. favorite one. I'll go listen to that again. Well, the one thing that is for certain is that bands and people who work together and create a family and create great music, there's something that goes beyond chemical that's true. in it, and there's a reason to stay in it, and it it you inform each other just like we inform each other and oh it's true though <laughs> no, no, it's, been, it's, it's, it's been kind of the coolest thing because we had so many huge huge dreams for the band mm -hmm. and we didn't get there as the band but now you know our guitar player creates video content for Apple Music working with some of the wow. biggest you know people in the world from Zane Lowe to the artist to mm -hmm. our bass player is in DNCE traveling the world playing songs I co-wrote Dan's you know, with Gwen Stefani playing songs I co-wrote. Um, oh, it's like, cool. it's really, you know, we got, our dream was always to play SNL, which we did not get anywhere close. Mm -hmm. But oh. Dan and Stevie, the guitar player, also was playing with Gwen for a little bit. They went on SNL and How played cool songs that? that I co-wrote, but wow. there was just a different blonde woman singing them. But that's okay. <laughs> but, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, to say that we're fans is to put it mildly, and to say that we are fans more than we were Absolutely. before we met Absolutely. really takes it to another level. I didn't know what to expect. Um, well, well, to be honest, I didn't either because it's like it's such a technical show mm -hmm. and I'm like, I am very technical when it comes to song structure, but that's mm -hmm. a very boring thing to mm -hmm. explain on a mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't really know what we're going to talk about because I don't even know. And, and probably or hopefully what you found out is it's actually not that technical of a show. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I think that's actually what makes us a little bit different. We'll yeah. go in there and it will yeah. come out because, yeah. you know, if we yeah. don't know about you as a person and what inspires you and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, ultimately, if you were to wrap it up, Dave will wrap it up. But if you were to give your best advice to somebody who's aspiring out there, what would you tell them? Uh, two things. Best advice is don't ever quit. Mm -hmm. um, I know that sounds so stupid, but it's true because uh, everything's meant to be as long as you don't quit. Mm -hmm. uh, if when the band didn't work out, if I would have just quit, none of this would have happened. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just about the money I made, it's about the songs that I love that the world has heard. Mm -hmm. If I would have quit, those songs would have never been written. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other advice is to be bold. Whether you are a songwriter, a singer, an engineer, a manager, an executive, whatever it is, be bold in your choices. Yeah. Um, because everyone can just be easy and copy somebody else. Yeah. But if you're actually bold and if you find what's in, and bold can be, mean very different things, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you can find in you that is bold for you and bold for whatever you like to create, then I think then that's the way to win. Fabulous. Yeah. 
um, the industry's better with because of your presence, both of your presence. But it, well, it literally is better. Please keep doing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, Take no quarter. Do don't step of, back. Please ask. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we do a lot of live things and so on and so forth. And if you so ever cool. had the time to be on a panel with us, for sure. audience would... I'm here. Would kill it. Yeah. Um, we're happy to, happy to awesome. have you. Thank Dave, you. Dave, take us home. Wow, this is a lot of pressure. Um, well, first and foremost, if you, you know, Justin's, he's got a little money stash away, and sometimes people like that are hard to buy gifts for, so a quality concealer might work in that case. Um, I, 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 on a serious note, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about uh, some of the things he said, and, and I know I've used this metaphor with you before, I'm going to try it again because I think the context is more accurate now. Um, the technical side of creativity could be becoming the world's fastest typist. Uh, the creative part would be what you do with that typewriting skill. Would you write a novel? Would you write a, the lyrics to a song? And that's predicated on life's experiences. Justin wouldn't be able to do and write what he does without the pain he's gone through. I'm not advocating a person go through pain, but if you do, it's a good source of inspiration. In his life, to me, when I listen to his music, and now that I've gotten to know him a little bit, it's all right there in everything he does creatively. So he's a typist that, that also has a lot to say. There's some, there's some truth in there somewhere. Figure it out and let me know when you do. Thanks. Yeah.